How's it going guys? I'm all doing. Welcome to a new video tutorial from iPinOS. Today we're gonna create or we're actually going to uh, like go in through introduction through a really awesome thing that you've been using if you are like probably a web developer that you have been using for quite some time right now but you can't quite figure out where it is. So we got actually going to see how tasks automation works on Node.js and JavaScript. So if you're like using, I don't know, WordPress or like Webpack, the Webpack Dev Server extension that allows you to uh, keep track of your files for any changes, uh, anything you change your file, you save it and like the the server or the page reloads, auto reload and you know, like reload the changes and all of the things. So if you've been using like something like this, uh, you're actually the right choice or the right place to learn how to do that on your own today. And we're gonna learn more things about how tasks automation actually works on Node.js and JavaScript and which library is being used to. So we are actually going to go through gulp.js. So gulp.js is a library that allows tasks automation uh, on Node.js. So when I say on Node.js, so it pretty much runs on any platform like Windows, Mac OS X, Linux or any other platform Node.js supports. So it's a very lightweight library. It's been used actually for quite some time for like for huge libraries, for huge frameworks that use Gold.js, huge teams, uh, companies, all of them like use it for uh, tasks automation. And it's not only just concerned about simple tasks or something. It can do a hell of a lot of things if you try to, uh, I don't know if you have like a complicated task about deleting like images whenever you want to deploy or something or you want to like copy images from one destination to another. Uh, if you actually really uh, intending to deploy your website or if you have any changes or depending on your like needs, Gulp.js should help and do this. So after going to the website gulp.js.com, you are actually to get with this uh, really awesome web page, automate and enhance your workflow. So we actually, as from here, you can quietly see that you're gonna need to install gulp.cli and gulp uh, on your directory and like running a file. So all you're gonna need to do is just like put in a file there. Uh, it's very well talked documented. So you can just go ahead and check out the documentation from here. But I'm just gonna like go ahead and create a very simple script today. So I can just give you like a quick getting started with Gulp.js. What is Gulp.js and how it's being used on a real world example. So let's just go ahead and jump into Visual Studio project. I've, uh, I've got a project open up in here. So I've gone like behind the scenes and created all of the different things in here. They're just very basic thing. Uh, we have a distribution folder that holds index.html. Index.html has nothing actually. It's a basic HTML file. Uh, we have node modules that holds uh, modules because I've already installed it. But I'm just gonna walk you through which modules that you're gonna need to require to run gold.js and uh, like automate your tasks. And we have like a SAS folder under this SRC. This SAS folder holds a style.scss, which is a SAS language or SAS or CSS preprocessor. Pre we're so going to see how we can use gold.js or the power of gold.js to pre-process this, uh, put it on a normal CSS or pre-compile it into a normal CSS. Then we can just use it later on on running the actual web page and include it on the actual index.html. And here we basically we have package.json and package.log.json. So it's quite basic. As I've said, it has nothing really special about that. So first things first, before starting, you're gonna need to install a couple of libraries as you've seen in here. So the install gulp.cli. Uh, so you're gonna need to do gulp.cli and make sure this is very important to install it as a global module. So do not install it on your project directory, just put in the dash C to make sure it's gonna be installed uh, like a global uh, modular because it's gonna be needed by all of your projects, like a shared modular between them. So this is the first thing you're gonna need. The second thing is the actual Gulp library for your project. So on each project, you're gonna need to install Gulp, not Gulp CLI, but the Gulp, and make sure to save it as a developer dependency because uh, Gulp actually gonna only need it on the um, like development uh, phase before deployment or something because it's not going to be really needed by the application to run or something you actually be able or capable of using that on a server or something but like most of the time it's going to be used on the development phase so I'll start as the save development uh, and for the SAS pre-compiling the SAS and all the different things we're going to need uh, node SAS or we're going to need um, the gulp sas so just put in gulp sas install this and obviously we're going to need another thing which is browser sync uh, browser sync is going to allow us to sync metadata between the visual studio code editor and the chrome or any other browser like firefox or internet explorer enough internet explorer is fully supported because it's like completely 
dead, but yeah, obviously you are going to use Chrome or uh, like Firefox for this one. So yeah, this is gonna sync the data so you'll be able to like reload and save changes and uh, you know keep track of changes and stuff like this. So this is all you're gonna need to install for now. And obviously before installing all of this, make sure to initialize your project uh, so you know the basics of Node.js and how it works. If you do not, make sure to go ahead and watch. I have a full series about Node.js and how it works. Uh, like on my channel, so just go ahead find that or you can find the link in the description below or my website is com So you can quietly find everything there. So now uh, as you can see we have the project So I bet all of you guys have this project structure on your computer right now And you're actually waiting for me to start doing the real thing that you came for So first things first uh, You need to create a new file under your root projects into the root projects Call it gulp file.js so the gold file is going to be responsible for like uh, creating all of the tasks and automating them and which task uh, need another task to run and so on and so forth so we're going to need to require a couple of things so remember this is a node.js thing so you can't quietly use an import in here so to import things and stuff because this is like an ESX and it's going to be used by uh, you know like a webpack or something to pre-compile into ES5 or any browser supported JavaScript version but in this case we're gonna need to use uh, like a native like a native Node.js language uh, with require and stuff so here I'm uh, probably gonna need first the gulp library the main thing so I'm gonna require that I'm gonna call this gulp uh, the second thing I'm gonna need the SAS library so the SAS library is gonna allow us as I've told you to like compile or pre-compile the SCSS file uh, down into a normal SCS or normal CSS file, uh, so we're gonna need for this gulb uh, SAS, and obviously we're gonna need a browser sync. So I'm just gonna browser sync require and browser dash sync. So this this should do the job perfectly. Uh, we're actually gonna need to extract the reload function from the browser sync. I'm just gonna call browser sync in here. So browser sync dot reload and it should like grab us the reload function because we're gonna need it later on. Now what we need is actually to create a task to um actually like compile or pre-compile the SCSS files into C into a normal CSS file. So this is the first thing you're gonna need to do. And actually Gulp is actually all of it based on tasks. So if you like want to do something, you're actually gonna first create a task then you know like you can you can do hell a lot of things for these tasks um task is being created by using the main library and you call the tasks function so uh, you do a tasks function and a task need the name so each task has a unique name so you have to provide it within like a, a very unique name i'm just gonna call this task and you have to memorize this name because you're gonna actually need it whenever you try to call this task or run the, the task or execute it so you are actually going to need this and the second argument it, it has like a couple of definitions for this function or for this method exactly but uh the second one is going to be the callback that runs whenever this task is being actually executed or whenever you tell it to execute let's say the sas task this this callback function is going to be running so what you're going to need to do is using the gulp as well i'm gonna like um uh like src so the src function allows us to locate files and layout them into the memory so as we as i told you before in there the src the sas folder the side.sscss uh, we're gonna need to go ahead and reload this file so we can like use the sas function and pre-compile into a normal css so therefore here we're gonna need to tell it to go into src forward slash sas you can use like um, a relative path in here as you can probably see i'm doing in here and it has the pipe method so the, the pipe method is just gonna like uh you know after finishing with this one it's just gonna like provide us with the data and move to the other task and so on and so forth like a chain of executed uh, commands or something like remember like this This is the first command to do layout the file after loading the file move to the other one and so on and so forth So this is called the pipe uh, Like imagine it as a, as a real world pipe. So this is how you can visualize it inside your head So the pipe the pipe I'm gonna need to use the sas function So it's it's a function as I told you and we're going to, to uh, check for errors So if there is any error, so if the error events we have to check for that and if there is any error, we're gonna run a callback. And obviously, I'm actually just simply gonna console dot error. And for console error, I'm um, just gonna put in here sas dot log error. So it's it's like saved in a, in a in a function right over there for us. 
uh, to be able to access it very easily. So also we're gonna need to pipe if there is any error, if, if there's no no errors at all, what we're gonna do is like actually we can put the destination or we can use the goal function, the goal destination or dest to um, to put the actual layered file into somewhere. So here after running the SAS thing, so this function is just gonna go ahead and compile the layered file data into from, from the memory. And finally, if it does that correctly, what we're gonna need to do is just put in the, the uh, let me just save this to make it look a little bit more readable. And you give it the destination where you wanna put the final result or the final compiled file. So you're just gonna give it the directory, you don't give it the file name because the file name is gonna be the same as the source uh, SAS name file. So yeah, that's going to clearly see this and finally we're just gonna like uh, pipe that out into uh, or using the pipe after finishing all of that what we're actually going to do is like you know reload I'm gonna use the reload function so we can tell the browser to reload that there is some changes and you have got to reload so we're gonna provide it with the configuration object this configuration object gonna have a stream so we're gonna give it a stream and it's gonna be like a true so that's there is something has been reloaded and uh, you, you've got to reload the actual browser in order to upload or like sync the changes. So this is the first stack. Now the second task is gonna be about uh, like serving the files or serving the distribution file on here, which is gonna like act as a server, like a Webpack dev server, serving it into a Chrome or something. And this is where browser sync comes uh, in handy. So let me just like serve um, this files. So I'm just gonna like use this. I'm gonna call bulk and I'm gonna like give it a new task. This task is gonna be called serve. So to be quite interesting. And if this task, I don't know if you have like something, uh, some task on Gulp is related to another task. Like some task has to, uh, I don't know, run another task in order to from this from from the current task you're actually current, currently working on to. Uh, work exactly the same. So actually it, it requires another task. So you have to attach it on an array so you can include as many tasks as you want. But in this case, we're going to only need the SAS task. So whenever we want to serve, we have, we have first to compile the files, then we can serve that. And remember that it takes a callback as it easily does uh, always. So the serve and the SAS function. So we have to like, whenever we call the serve task in here, so we have to run the SAS tasks first in order to carry on with the actual serve callback function thing uh, this is this is like a necessity and here we're gonna use the browser sync uh, the browser sync is actually a function whenever you call it you're just gonna like uh, you know start a process and open up a, like a URL create a server and open up the URL on the browser you actually have in default on your uh, platform so Windows I'm having a Chrome so we're just gonna by aut automatically by default gonna open up the URL which is a local host server uh, just open it into Chrome so we can easily see our uh, server. So I'm just going to put in here the server and the server actually is going to take another object. So it takes the base directory. So as you can see in here, we, what is the base directory or the main directory of this server you're actually going to run. So I'm going to just put in the distribution. The distribution folder is going to be like the main directory. So take it if you're not familiar with the distribution folder. Distribution folder is simply um, works as the public folder. So it like, you know, serves the public files into the actual, uh, server and stuff. So yeah, this is, this is all it does in here. And finally, what you're going to need to do is pretty much to compile that. So, or just run a watch for the files. So I'm going to use the watch function. The watch function runs, uh, some like, uh, you know, some watching for a specific file. So if there is any changes to this file, it's just gonna like do the whole process in here and reserve stuff and stuff like this. So we have got to like keep an eye or watch the SAS files, or the SAS style file. So let me just quickly copy that and put it right here. And this is what it actually takes. So, and also what you've got to make, to give it as the second argument is, uh, what is the task? Uh, undertaker or the task function. So we're just going to provide it with a SAS function that we have created up in here. So as I've told you before that you're going to need to memorize that. So you're actually going to use it or it's going to be coming handy uh, whenever you actually try to watch for files or actually running uh, like this browser sync server or something like this. So here, um, I don't know, let me just put in here, keep an eye on the uh, SAS files. So to keep it in easy peasy. So here we go. Uh, from this point, you can probably say that we have finished working with Gulp 
and like all the tasks so quite simple as you can probably see in here if you have never used tasks before or gulp or you have never used something like this it's quite simple so all you're gonna need to do is or all, all you're gonna need to have is a basic knowledge about like how Node.js actually runs and stuff and everything should pretty much work for you guys so after saving this let me just I'll pull off a terminal so you're gonna need a terminal and all you're gonna need to do is run a gulp serve so here if we try to open up the destination folder uh, or a distribution folder pretty much it has no files whatsoever but if you're, if you're gonna run that so put a gulp and you put the command in front of it the, the command you want to actually run which is pretty much called the main command the main command in here is the serve command which is related to the sas command so here as you can see uh, starting the sas finished starting the serve uh finished serve after 334 milliseconds well we're still like like waiting for this uh to complete but if you can clearly notice that so you're gonna go to the distribution you find style.css pre-compile or compile successfully to us or compile from the actual sas file into a normal css down so as you can clearly see this uh it's working with no problems uh nothing at all uh but i think this one you're gonna you, you don't pretty much need to provide it with a distribution or with the relative path just put in the name of the base directory of it and it should actually work pretty much fine and sometimes actually it takes a little bit of time to actually create the server and run it for you but finally here it is uh, we've got the local server or you can probably access it on the ui so you've got like a really nice user interface provided by browser sync uh the module so you can easily manage yours or you can just easily access your files in here being served from the distribution folder which is has the index html and from the index html to be fair i'm just like you know uh, requiring or linking it to the normal css file and this is all i'm going to do or actually i'm doing in here and serving all the different things in here so this is just for saving one file but let's say you have like a distribution or this this uh directory the sas directory has a lot of files and a lot of directories inside them there is like a sas files and stuff or you're going to need to keep an eye all on all of them so instead of putting in one file in here what you can do is just put in like an asterisk and asterisk which means like allocate everything then a forward slash so this actually means if there's any folders go dig or go inside these folders and keep an eye on if there isn't no folders just put it like an asterisk for any file name is going to be matching and as css for the actual extension so this is going to like provide us or match any directory has any like sas files or just sas files standing uh like being living in the sas folder so just going to keep an eye on all of them so you can probably see here it's very simple and it comes in in in, in very handy way with this really awesome uh, login here so you can easily use it for more tasks even more advanced than this one this is like a very simple thing you can you can get uh behind the scenes after gold file it depends on your project the project you're actually running on uh, you can just come up with a really complicated task that can help you a lot in your team if you're like collaborating on some projects uh, or like collaborating on open source projects gulp is can come in very very handy and it's actually very very awesome to use so that was actually guys for this video tour that was a really quick thing and quick introduction about uh gulp.js and how it works and stuff if you really want the series to carry on i don't know let me know in the comments i'll be very happy to do another video tutorials uh on the series and add more tutorials and give you more information examples and snippets and how it actually works uh with a little bit more advanced use of gold because this is just a very simple thing and yeah, I'll be very happy to do so, guys. So as I've told you guys, I'll catch you all in the next video tutorial.